What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are talking about early spring muddy water fishing, the best baits, the best techniques to try and catch fish this time of the year when your water gets muddy. So this day started off awesome. Basically obliterated my pinky launching the boat to shoot this video. Uh, I was hoping to do some fishing, but uh, I think I shattered the tip of my pinky. It's all swollen. I got it splinted up, taped up, but uh, it's throbbing. So no casting for me today, but muddy water. It is early spring and with early spring, it brings random weather, right? One day it could be 70 bluebird skies, you're in your shorts, your flip flops, your t-shirt. The next day it is tornado warning, flash floods warning, uh, crazy torrential downpours. You know, spring, especially early spring, weather just has a mind of its own and you never really can count on it being the same for any length of period of time. So, perfect example. I'm sitting in Richland Creek up here at Dayton Boat Dock. Uh, two days ago, we had a major storm come through. This whole giant flat, this is a creek that comes out here. This whole giant flat was chocolate milk. As you can see now, it's starting to kind of, the muddy, it's kind of you know subsiding a little bit. Uh, whatever's in the water is kind of cleaning up. That clear water through the creek coming in behind that mud is, is pushing that clear water in and pushing that mud out. So it's slowly getting cleaner. But these are situations that I often find myself in no matter where I am fishing uh, this time of the year in the country. You get those early spring storms and it murks up or muddies the water. And that can send, send you kind of spinning a little bit. You know, yesterday it was crystal clear water. I had six to eight, 10 foot of visibility. Today I got 12 inches of visibility and it's cold. What do I do? Where do these bass go? So that's what we're gonna cover today. I got some of my favorite techniques uh, and baits all laid out here. And um, yeah, the first thing you need to ask yourself or take into consideration is what is your normal everyday water clarity. You know, I fish places in Louisiana or Texas or Mississippi. Every day is the same. It is chocolate milk and those fish munch in it, right? I've also fished places where there's 20, 30, 40 foot of visibility. Uh, and if you get a little bit of rain or a little bit of storm and now your visibility goes from 20 foot to say 12 foot, that messes with those fish too. So take into consideration what your fishery, a typical day, typical, I gotta quit slamming my finger, a, a typical um, water clarity is on your fishery and then adjust accordingly. You know, did it go from 10 foot of visibility to less than a foot of visibility? That's considered chocolate. That is chocolate milk and that's gonna be tough as long as it's not cold water coming in. We're gonna talk about that here shortly. Um, but typically, when you get these spring storms coming, right, it's early spring, so we've already talked about how these fish are transitioning, right? They're moving, they're, their end goal is to get to their spawning areas, their spawning bays. So they're going from those main lake points to the secondary points. They're kind of working their way in along creek channels to, to make their migration or whatever, their little route. Uh, to spawn, but you get that storm, all of a sudden it's warm water coming in the back of those creeks. Man, it's afterburners. Those fish are poof, they're gone to the very back. They got their nose right up in that moving water and they're waiting for that fresh water to come in. Uh, it brings nutrients, bait fish, crawdads, all sorts of goodies for them to chew on. So they are up there in that current. Unless that water coming in is colder than the lake water. If you have muddy, cold water coming in, for me, that's game over. I can't, that's my, probably my absolute worst scenario as far as bass fishing. I can't stand uh, trying to catch fish in cold, muddy water. It just shuts them down, they lock up, 
Uh, there's not a lot of visibility, so you can't call them from any distance with a glide bait or anything like that. So that is the toughest situation for me. You know, some guys might like that. Some guys might have that, that dialed, but for me, that, no, it's, it's not fun. But if it's warm, muddy water coming in, those fish are going to the back. So I have some baits. My number one bait, uh, I'm sitting here looking at a brush pile here, so I'm thinking about a jig, but that scenario, right? We'll kind of go, we'll go through a couple different scenarios. That scenario, those fish are moving to the back, boom, you got that running, warm water coming in, kind of murking up, muddying up everything. Go to the back, check there first, and then you're gonna fish your way out. So go to the back, get in that current, you're gonna throw shallow, right up as shallow as you can. Those fish are gonna get up there, and then if you're not catching fish, work your way out to the next um, creek channel or break or uh, heck maybe a, a, a row of docks or you know whatever maybe maybe it's a rock pile but if I'm up there in that muddy warm water I'm throwing some kind of spinner bait okay typically and this is gonna apply to most of these baits and colors typically I'm going bright I am going some kind of chartreuse in white, some kind of white, um, and then heck, if I need to, something with actual white blades. Uh, but white this time of the year, doesn't matter if you're throwing a chatterbait or a spinnerbait, even a lipless or a square bill, it seems to work. But a spinnerbait, I don't have a trailer on some of these. Got a little, uh, little trailer on that guy right there. I'll link all these baits down below in the video description. But I'm gonna start off probably, depending on the water clarity, again, it's all relative to the fishery you're fishing on, probably gonna start off with some kind of combination with some silver and some gold. Gold for me has always worked really well in that stained muddy water. Uh, and if it's worse than that, then you gotta go with some kind of paint, painted blades, either chartreuse or white. All white blades show up really, really well in the water. And again, it's all about visibility uh, when you're given these conditions, right? Those fish are used to seeing so far, now they can't. So they're feeling the vibration on their lateral line. They're looking, they're trying to pick out something in that muddy water. Now these fish are great. They're used to it. So they are really good at hunting, but um, I like to give them a little bit extra visibility if need be. Now, <clears throat> if you need to switch it up a little bit, Throw something, those were both double willow blades. You can throw something with a Colorado blade or an Indiana blade. Another great technique is throwing a blade in there that's orange or like fire craw red. Just something that has a little more uh, thump. You know, that blade's gonna have a little bit more thump than that big willow. Not necessarily, not necessarily the big willow, but a smaller willow. Um, I grabbed this one to show you guys the size of the willow. You can upsize your blades or play around with different style blades, something that's gonna, that's gonna thump a little bit more, let those fish find it. That's that Terminator. Uh, Nichols make, makes an awesome, awesome spinnerbait. I'll link those down below. But some kind of spinnerbait is going to be uh, my number one bait. Again, even if it's, not, if, if it's not running water, say it's high water and there's uh, flooded brush piles or whatever, I can throw that, that spinnerbait right in that junk and bring that bait through and those blades are are flashing, vibrating, and it's just a really easy bait to throw in those scenarios. So that's gonna be my number one bait. Uh, same scenario. Let's go with a chatterbait. This time of the year, a version of a vibrating jig or a chatterbait is a must. These baits shine basically year round, but I can't tell you how many fish are caught on a white chatterbait this time of the year. In that same scenario, you get up in that running water, this is actually a cross-sized chatterbait. I've talked about this in a recent video. It's got a real stout weed guard that you can, you can adjust on it. Almost got me. Um, so you can, if you're fishing around flooded wood or you're in that same situation with those, with that spinner bait where you're fishing flooded brush or uh, you know, whatever, right? Springtime, some of these lakes come up and then they'll crash them, but they come up, they get kind of flood stage, there's gonna be debris in the water. That chatterbait 
uh, again, that's that cross eyes, uh, just comes through stuff very, very well. So if I am in that same situation where I'm up in that creek channel or that moving water, I'm throwing this thing right on the bank and I'm getting that thing uh, up there and just swimming it out. Having that spunk shad or some kind of cool trailer on there, a good looking trailer, it just adds to the visibility of that bait. But that really, it's all about that blade. Um, and again, play around with it. Play around with, a uh, if it's really truly chocolate milk, play around with a, a, uh, a gold blade. Um, that was kind of my staple uh, back on Clear Lake. If you know fishing like Rodman or some of the some of the creeks, if it got blown out, uh, that's when I would transition from uh, silver to gold, and I had a lot of lot of success doing it. Even on my A rigs, I would change my A rig blades from silver to gold. It just seems to show up a little bit better in that muddy or murky stained water. Okay, so a chatterbait. Same thing. I showed you the white. I showed you the dark. You can go with a chartreuse in white, uh, but really you want something that is easily seen. So white's gonna glow, it's gonna stand out real bright, same with chartreuse, and then some kind of dark, you know, uh, something with some green pumpkin, some blue in it. It's real co contrasty in the water, and that goes a long way. Even though it's not a real bright looking bait going through the, you know, the water, it's still a, uh, a fairly substantial meal. It's got a good profile, uh, black blade, black and blue trailer. Uh, it just has a lot of contrast and they can see that really, really well as well. So white, white and chartreuse, and some kind of dark color is really gonna be the colors I throw in all of these baits. So talked about uh, spinnerbait, chatterbait. Probably the next bait in the lineup for me, in that same situation, it's gonna be some kind of swim jig. Talked about these guys last year. Uh, a swim jig is just a four wheel drive, heavy, no jack hook. This is a California swim jig, Matt designed for dirty jigs, I don't know, a decade ago, maybe longer. Uh, it's got that no jack in there. You're not gonna bend that hook out. Real stout, stout weed guard. You can throw this on straight braid if you want, but again, you got the real good colors. Uh, it's a good profile in the water but it's weedless, so you can throw it in those brush piles, in that flooded timber, up in that current, and just bring that thing out. That bait's gonna be swimming. Favorite trailers on there, either the Largo Shad or the D-Walker. You know, Matt's preached about that trailer for, for years. Uh, it's a very durable, durable bait. Again, Largo Shad works well too, but you just want something that's visible, and heck, when that visibility is really, really uh, low, you can throw straight braid if you need to. I still throw a, uh, a mono leader on my braid, so braid to leader. But again, you can throw this right up in that junk. If you are in a current situation where there's eddies, right? There's current breaks. Those fish are gonna be sitting behind that stuff, waiting for the the current to bring them food. You know, flip this thing up in there. They're they're gonna be stacked in those little breaks. But a swim jig is probably my number three. So, what else do I have tied on that I wanted to show you guys? I got a couple more baits down here. I almost forgot to talk, talk about this. I actually have this one tied on. Um, lava craw, uh, fire, whatever you want to call it. Fire craw, chatterbait. This is a lava craw spunk shad by Missile Baits. It pairs up great with it. Again, visibility. It's really, really hard to beat um, a version of red this time of the year. So that guy right there. Ooh. And... Uh, for you finesse guys. So for me, I, I basically have two finesse baits tied on if I'm in these situations. And then we'll kind of go back to some square bells and some lipless and wrap it up. But for me, um, I was just looking at these baits that I have tied on. When you find yourself in that low visibility situation, you know, muddy, stained, muddy, chocolate milk, water those fish from in my opinion pull to the best cover so if you're on this big flat there's a brush pile right there there's a brush pile right there brush pile out there that i can visibly see right i'm only in uh three foot basically um those fish are gonna pull to that cover right so some kind 
a flipping jig. I'm, I'm rigging up the flipping stick and I'm going flipping. These fish are in that cover. I need something that I can put that bait in there. Um, I want a trailer that has good action. Again, it's all about visibility and, and feel those fish. You, wanna, you want them to know that your jig is down there. Uh, this is the, was that the uh, Chunky D by Missile? Has great, great kicking action. I have that on a, uh, that's a flipping jig, dirty jigs, real stout, no jack hook in that as well. And on this guy, more natural color, uh, and that is the Yama Craw. That's that new bait by Yamamoto. Uh, real good action as well which leads me to my next point. So as it's muddy, these fish are in that cover, right? Storm comes through, muddies up your water for a day, a two, three days maybe. But as that storm leaves, the water kind of starts settling down and those creeks are still flowing. That's gonna be the first area that clears up. So behind that mud is coming the clear water and then eventually it'll clear out the entire creek and flat so as you're fishing maybe you're fishing a two or three day tournament as you're fishing you're visibly seeing that water clarity is getting better you don't necessarily have to throw your black and blue as it starts transitioning you can start going with your more natural colors and that applies to your spinner baits it applies to your chatter baits your swim jigs you know as you start going through the few days as it's clearing up you might not have to throw a solid white spinnerbait. Now you can throw some some willow, some silver willows with a more natural color. Uh, same with all the baits. So pay attention because hopefully your water is not going to stay muddy for a long period of time. And if it does, the fish will get more comfortable. They get more used to it. But as it's muddy, those fish are going to be in that cover. You can flip that jig in there as it clears up a little bit. Go more natural with your color selections okay a little more natural still has a little bit of flash i think that's called what color is that called bama bug maybe i can't remember i'll link it all down below in the video description but it's green pumpkin with some green flash uh that's called super bug i believe um but my next point i think i've talked about it in recent videos maybe i haven't um as you're moving shallow, say you're winter fishing, now you're, you're following these fish in as they make this transition. A lot of these fish are kind of weary at first. They're, you know, they're not comfortable up shallow. So be really uh, quiet on your trolling motor, really quiet on your boat. Uh, make sure you're not hitting the dock with your jig or you know, maybe you have to kill the big motor, drop the trolling motor and, and, and move in closer with your trolling motor. Don't, you know, cut off your big motor farther away. These fish get real kind of sketchy up there. They might be line shy, uh, even in that mud, muddy water. You'll have to play around with it. It all depends on your fishery, but uh, just be cognizant of that and try to be as quiet and as stealthy as possible as you're going shallow. If you're up in that moving water, obviously there's a lot going on. You don't have to be as, as stealthy, but uh, pay attention to that as well. So we talked about bait colors as that water starts clearing up after the storm you know go back to your ghosty colors your more natural colors but in that mud you got to go bright your whites your chartreuses uh, or your your darks your real contrasty stuff so that was for you fish finesse fishermen one other bait i want to talk about real quick is some kind of drop shot okay same thing fish is going to be in that brush pile if i want to fish a worm that's suspended up off the bottom you know, these fish are typically active this time of the year as that water's warming up. Hopefully you don't have that cold water coming in. Um, you know, suspending that worm in their face is money. So a drop shot and a jig are my two finesse techniques uh, that I have tied on for sure this time of the year. It's basically, you're flipping, you're pitching, you're, th you're making target casts to visible pieces of cover that those fish are gonna be in, okay? All right change the situation actually let's keep the situation so we're up there in that in that moving water another good bait to throw is some kind of square bill okay the square bill the benefit of it is it has that square bill on it so it deflects off of stuff a lot better than say 
a lipless crankbait, right? You're gonna deflect a lot better. So again, same situation, those fish are up there in that shallow water, throw this guy up there and start moving it. Again, you go with your reds, your craw colors, your real bright colors, okay? Something they can see, something they can hear, okay? I'm not gonna shake with this hand because you might hear me a little bit louder scream than the bait. Um, but something that has a lot of sound, that scamp, where's that scamp at? This guy right here. That thing is so loud. That's when uh, 13 fishing, that thing is one of the loudest lipless sounding uh, square belts on the market, excuse me. Great bait. So throw that square bill up there, burn it, pause it, deflect it, pause it. Those fish are looking to eat. Okay. Now, as the fish back away from that current, that current starts running, stops running. The fish are kind of coming back to the secondary points. They might be holding on dock pilings or, or whatever it may be. Maybe they're on this giant flat. Okay. That's where I'm gonna switch back to the square bill and the lipless crank. So uh, you can still throw the chatterbait. Chatterbait works great too. Uh, just the that lipless has a lot of sound. It's uh, easier for those fish to find this bait. You can cover, you can chuck and wind, you can cover, cover a lot of water with this guy right here. So on a big flat like this, Yes, I can visibly see the brush piles or the, the stuff that's sticking up, but heck, maybe these fish are just out here on the flat in you know, bellies in the mud. Heck, maybe they're, they're chasing bait. I don't know, but I'm gonna use that LV or that uh, TN70 or the rattle trap to cast. And I'm not doing the hopping technique. I'm actually casting and I'm reeling, casting and reeling. I'm bringing that bait. I'm trying to cover as much water to find where those fish went. Same thing with the square bill. So some of my favorites, talk to you about the scamp. Again, same colors. As that water gets clear, you can go back to your more natural colors, but as it's muddy, go with the bright colors. The scamp, and the great one's that little spro. It's a little speed demon. That's a, that's a cool little bait. You guys know how much we love the biggie. Real good knock in it. It's the biggie. And then, got these guys for you. Uh, one more. And then I'll talk about those guys. This is that ATV by Bill Lewis. This is uh, this is a square bill that is quickly becoming one of our favorite. I know Matt just blasted them on this recently. Um, this is a cool bait. It is really, really, uh, I must say weedless. Uh, it is really hard to get this bait snagged. The way they designed this bait, the float, the, the bill angle, everything about it is really, really fun to fish in and around stuff covers okay so that guy right there has good sound comes with good ewg hooks uh, that is quickly becoming one of our favorites and then if you want to go balsa this is the ots garage the og that's the four okay it's a balsa bait this is a silent bait i'm not going to shake it in my right hand but it's a silent bait but good visibility high float, and uh, just a little bit different action. A little bit colder water, tighter action, that is a must. So those are my square bill lineups. That's my square bill lineup if I'm in these style types of conditions, okay? Now, last but not least, we're gonna talk about the lipless real quick. Again, I talked about the, the TN70. Whew. Again, your bright colors, real flashy real red and then the other one i really like to throw is that uh, magic man this is the 65 size uh it's just a really loud really really high uh pitch rattle that's a good little lipless bait um so on the flats i'm casting and i'm i'm just reeling right i'm just i'm fishing it like i would a spinner bait now as that water starts to clear up then i can go with the hopping technique you know, fish the LV 500. I grabbed a couple of those somewhere. Uh, an LV, you know, do the TN 70 with the hop, right? Just hop it up, let it fall. Hop, let it fall. If it gets clear enough where you think that those fish are starting to get more active and can see better, then you can go the blade bait too. Um, kind of the exact opposite. It's quiet. It is flashy, but it's quiet. But sometimes those fish up shallow, like I said, they get weary. They get kind of, 
They can get overpowered sometimes with the, with the high rattle. So maybe your fish need to have a quiet bait. Maybe that Ots Garage, the OG4 will, will work great. Maybe just the spinner bait, quiet, or, or maybe a blade bait. It totally depends on your fishery, totally depends on your fish, but don't get overwhelmed with that muddy water, okay? Again, if it's muddy and cold, go somewhere else, try something else on the lake, go out to the main lake, look for your main lake points, your secondary points, maybe fish a little bit deeper, but, um, if it's, if it's warmer, those fish are gonna be back there. So understand that murky is not muddy. Don't be afraid of murky water. You know, this right now is stained, probably has maybe 18 inches of visibility. It gets clear. You can get eight, 10, 12 foot of visibility, but right now it's stained, but it was chocolate milk yesterday. So understand the differences and understand the different baits and how you can apply them. Uh, and I think you guys will have a lot more success as we transition through spring and we deal with these uh, these random weather you know patterns, these storms coming through and really changing the the water color of your fishery. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I will try to get those as soon as possible. But don't be afraid of the muddy water. Go brighter, go louder, and then work back from there. As always, guys. We appreciate the support. Thank you for watching. If you learned something from this video or like this video, uh, give us a thumbs up. So hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.